Go ahead. So, we just watched two videos. The first was on John Paul Jones. Who is John Paul Jones? Emily. Good, leader of the Continental Navy. Okay, so uh, why would you guys think he would be significant as far as um, looking at the Revolutionary War? Henry. I mean, he did capture like 200 uh, British vessels. Very good. So during the uh, Revolutionary War, the uh, Continental Navy only had about 100 ships, but as uh, a nation, they were still able to sink about 200 um, British countries. vessels. And John Paul Jones was a part of that. So when you guys see, uh, see John Paul Jones, remember that he's significant because he was a leader uh, in some of the naval battles for the um, uh, for America in the Revolutionary War. Okay. Um, then the second video, the crash course video, is all about government. Okay. Um, so some important takeaways from this uh, crash course video was Shay's Rebellion. Does anyone remember Shay's Rebellion from the video? Yep, Emily. Um, it was when the farmers closed the. Um, what did he even want? I don't know what it was called. It was called. They closed the like where they were trying to make decisions because they didn't want the decisions. The, the decisions to be made because they could have find their money mm -hmm. and like their living. Okay, you're on the right track. So basically, Shay's Rebellion was um, due to the Revolutionary War. The um, United States each as a nation and uh, as individual states had uh, accrued debt, similar to how uh, Britain did in the French and Indian War, right? Yeah. Great Britain was in lots of debt in the French and Indian War. Well, because America won the Revolutionary War, with that came some debt. So each individual state had uh, accrued some debt, and as a nation they had accrued some debt. So, again, they decided to put out some taxes to pay off debt from the war. Okay, those taxes really affected the ones that aren't making a whole lot of money, like the farmers. Okay, the farmers, they're not able to pay off their taxes as easily. So they may have a rebellion, they revolt and uh, have an uprising. And that uprising, called Shay's Rebellion, directly leads to a discussion that the nation is going to have because the, the, uh, the United States is now realizing that they have an issue on their hands. States are imposing taxes, and then they have the nation. So they're at this uh, crossroads of who should have power. Should we invest power in the states? Should the states have the power to make their own laws and tax their own people? Or should the nation hold that power? Should the United States hold that power as a whole? So that's kind of at the crossroads that they're at. And these two guys were two guys on opposite ends of that argument. Okay, so it says Jefferson, he was an anti-federalist, and Hamilton was a federalist. What is a federalist? Who can tell me? Anyone know what a federalist is? Okay, you're on the right track. If you say federal government, what does that mean, Emily? Um, I was gonna answer what a federalist was. Okay. Um, it's kind of more similar to a like Republican now in like beliefs slash like how government should work, like how, how they think the government should have control over everything. Okay, so there at the time, um, this is kind of we're starting to form political parties at this, this point in history. There hadn't been really such thing as political parties until this point. Um, because now people are starting to disagree on different topics. And one of them was Federalist and Anti-Federalist. So a Federalist is someone who supported, you guys can remember it this way, like the federal government. The federal government is like the nation, okay? The United States. The federal government is like the United States government. So when you say, if someone's a Federalist, like Alexander Hamilton, he was a Federalist, that means he supported the nation like if you came down to who has more power the state or the nation his argument was the nation the nation should have the ultimate say they should have power over the states they should have power over the individual on the other hand thomas jefferson he wanted the power to be in the hands of smaller government like the states okay he was saying that people should be governed by the states 
And so this is kind of the argument that they had um, and that they disagreed with. So this is directly leading to the Constitutional Convention of 1787. What do we think happened at the Constitutional Convention of 1787? Okay, it's one of our key dates. Very good. The Constitution. Very good. Okay, they're going to write the Constitution at the uh, Constitutional Convention in 1787. Okay, and the uh, they kind of decides the argument because the Constitution is a document for what the states or the nation? The nation. The nation, the nation right? The Constitution is a document for the entire nation. It's rules for the entire nation as a government. So. The Federalists end up kind of winning out at, at this time that uh, and the power uh, the nation is going to have some power and they create the Constitution so understand that Shays rebellion that rebellion of taxes and that were imposed by small governments because of the war that argument directly led to the Constitutional Convention because that was when the nation really realized that they had to start making decisions um, they had to start making a decision on who has the power, okay? Um, so one of the earlier political parties that I, is, uh, there's not, it's not really a political party, but when we talk about division in the colonies, right before the war, we had the Loyalists and the, uh, right, the Loyalists and the Patriots, okay? So what's a Loyalist and what's a Patriot? Henry, tell me I one think of them. a Loyalist is like, no, Very good. Yes. Okay, a loyalist was someone who still sided with Great Britain. They were in America, but they were still loyal to the crown. They were loyal to the king. Okay, and then a patriot was obviously someone who was for the revolution. Okay, so that was kind of like the earliest form of division. Now we have federalists and anti-federalists, and then we'll later get into political parties like we have today versus Democratic Democrat and Republican, yes. Wasn't Whig like a just a third And there was a, the, a Whig party was a political party early on that's going to win some presidencies. Mr. Oh, you don't see what you're